what does magnet do right before we get into details of magnets and uh, magnets are used what uh, where are the magnets used what is magnetic field magnetic field lines properties of magnetic field and these are the things which need to be by hearted right they do current through a straight conductor everything before we go through that let's uh, see the basics of a magnet right how do we define a magnet basically so let's see that how how do we design a magnet not uh, define a magnet right so basically what is a magnet this is a magnet right which has a north pole and a south pole basically and uh, before uh, right okay let's 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 do it in this way let's uh, do it in this way okay let me do it here so this is a magnet which has a north pole and a south pole right every magnet has this uh, north pole and a south pole and uh, what what is a magnet uh, what does what does the south and north pole represent they represent that uh, no from north pole the, the every magnet every magnet has a magnetic field lines right magnetic field lines in which from north pole it is uh, the magnet the magnetic field lines are coming out from the north pole and they are getting inside or moving inside from south pole from outside from the outer region they are going inside and from this outer region they are going outside but inside the magnet the magnetic field lines are from south pole to north pole what is a magnetic field line magnetic field line what is a magnetic field line they represent the magnetic field they represent the magnetic field they represent the magnetic field right what do they do they represent their physically they do not exist right i mean you cannot see them or you cannot touch them physically but they do exist so what uh, what why do we uh, write anything like magnetic field lines just to uh, understand what is magnetic field the direction of magnetic field lines like in the direction which they are moving they represent the magnetic field right okay perfect so this is what a uh, magnet is all about also let's let's see here uh, what a magnet can do it is an object what exactly does it is an object that attracts uh, objects made up of iron cobalt nickel comes to the rest in north south direction when suspended freely okay uh, so before we go into this uh, area let's let's also see some more properties of magnetic fields okay also we know that uh, like like poles attract uh, repel for example I'll, I'll show you this i'll show you this like uh, it is a south pole and again it is a south pole so what is going to happen the uh, and uh, the lines are getting inside from here right the lines are getting inside so if you bring them close together they will repel each other right like charges like charge like poles what do they do they repel they repel they do not like to come closer or they cannot be bought closer uh, right but uh, unlike like unlike poles like north pole and south pole what exactly is happening north pole wants to give out the magnetic field lines and south pole wants to take the magnetic field lines in in it takes inside so what exactly is happening it will you know allow the magnetic lines of field pass from north pole to south pole therefore north and south attract each other so they will come in contact right but in south pole both the poles wants to both the pole uh, both the pole wants the magnetic field to be getting inside therefore from here magnetic field lines come and this go inside it is going towards the south pole that is the reason they will repel each other they will not attract each other also one more property of magnets or magnetic field lines whatever you call it what is the other property that they do not intersect like if uh, why do they don't uh, why do they right if this is a magnetic field line this is a magnetic field line and uh, like this is one magnetic field line one and let's say this is a magnetic field line two magnetic field line uh, two 
so what is going to happen at this point right uh, at which point at this point of intersection at this point of intersection if you bring a you know needle a compass needle a compass needle which has only one needle right this is a compass needle if you bring closer to this point this needle has to show two different points like one it won't will show uh, it it cannot show both the points right it will be propelled to show both the points whereas it cannot it cannot because it has only one needle so it cannot show two directions at one time right getting it so it will it will stop acting so which shows that magnetic field lines do not intersect they do they do not intersect they do not intersect let me get it clear once again okay at this point of intersection at this point of intersection right this compass cannot show two different directions it this compass cannot show two different directions right that proves that magnetic field lines do not intersect they do not what they do not intersect that is another property of a magnetic field line okay also if i just uh, discussed uh, the directions so let me uh, by heart you or make you understand the directions or make you by heart the directions what exactly how will you by heart the direction i'll make you by heart it so this is east west north and south this is the direction and if you see so just by heart this from south pole to north pole the mag if this is a magnet right so from inside it will go from south to north and from outside it will go to this direction from outside it will go to south pole so this is also the magnetic field of earth this is also the magnetic field of earth earth also has a magnetic field like this like earth has a north pole and south pole like this so let's say this is my earth right earth ka mag earth also has a magnetic field like this right from south pole to north pole inside the earth the magnetic field is like this but from outside the magnetic field goes like this so the magnets are designed or they get the magnetic field due to the magnetic properties of earth itself right okay so this is how the earth's magnetic field also works so earth also has the same type of magnetic field which the magnets has all right let's come to the next point what is the next point okay so let's get into the basic details i'll i'll since it's a revision lecture so i will make it much i will try to make it as simple as possible the revision lectures for you guys so i'm going to make it even simpler now just the focus over here so this chapter is basically divided into two parts this chapter basically is divided into two parts this entire chapter if you see it properly this entire chapter is divided into two parts the first part being magnetic effects of if electric current magnetic effects of electric current right and the second part being the second part is known as the second part in which it is divided this chapter is divided it is known as electromagnetic induction even if you go through your ncert textbook you will come across only these two important topics and every other thing will be subdivided into these two topics right so how do we differentiate between them uh, between these we differentiate between these with a very basic very 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 basic uh, phenomena right we differentiate between them with a very basic phenomena the basic phenomena being known as the fleming's rules the fleming's rules in this i have written in left hand side left hand side okay and this i have written in right hand side all right so here i will use fleming's left hand rule and here i will use fleming's right hand rule right right hand rule and here i am going to use the fleming's left hand rule it is as simple as this getting it the only difference between the magnetic effect of electric current and electromagnetic induction can be given as fleming's left hand rule and fleming's right hand rule that is the only basic difference between these two and we just need to learn what are these fleming's rules okay 
So I'm going to tell you what are these rules and how does it work and how it's getting applied in the entire chapter. Just uh, be focused over here. Do not <coughs> uh, lose your focus. All right. Let's get into the details. All right. Okay. So what is Fleming's left hand rule looks like is uh, let's let's. This is my finger, right? This is my finger and this is my thumb. And right. If I talk about my particular finger, if I am talking about my finger, so you have to use your thumb. So this is my, this is your thumb, right? This is your first finger, first finger. And this is your second finger or middle finger, whatever you call it, second finger. Just get the basics. So take out your hand like this and make it, make it, uh, you know, like this, right? As I keep it like this, right? Getting it left hand. I'm talking about the left hand. Use your left hand. Use your left hand use your left hand like this right you're getting it or not and marina so in in this plane your thumb is up, uh, acting upward this, uh, this is the first finger and this is the second finger right so this is the thumb first finger th second finger uh, do you guys get it for thumb first finger second finger thumb first finger second finger right okay and i'm going to tell you a rule a very simple and very effective rule just by hearted just by hearted do you know fbi what is fbi f b i what is fbi you know f stands for f stands for force right which you already know what is b b stands for magnetic field okay magnetic field magnetic field all right and what is i i is current as simple as that all right so this is how this is what is my uh, fleming's left hand rule looks like all right so also and what is my electromagnetic induction induction you already know it is induction right these two are opposite of each other what is it, it is from uh, in this part magnetic effect of electric current so from here in this part what we are getting in this part in this part we are getting a, a magnetic field from a current we apply current and we get magnetic field and here we apply magnetic field and we get current this is the basic difference right here due to current we are getting in this part due to current i'm getting a magnetic field and here due to magnetic field i'm getting a current this is the basic difference between them magnetic effects of electric current electric the magnetic effect of electric current so current if i apply current i'll get a magnetic field if i apply magnetic field i'll get a current in a wire in a conducting wire a metallic conducting wire so there is a basic difference between these two all right so let's come back to this part again right So this is going to be a Fleming's right hand rule. Now you will use your right hand, right? You are going to use your right hand. So I'm going to draw it in a different manner. So I'm going to draw it like this. So it is going upwards. Uh, all right. From this point. So and it is going in this point and it is going in this direction, right? Okay. But did you get it? So this is perpendicular to each other. This is perpendicular to this point. So these two are also perpendicular to each other and this is also perpendicular, right? So these two uh, are perpendicular. Actually, this is perpendicular, right? So these two fingers are perpendicular, always 90 degree, always 90 degree. My diagram may not be that accurate, but you need to understand it is 90 degree. Do not get confused. I'm making it very clear right now, right? Again, in this part, what do we see? It is again F M B I. Here it was force, and here in this we get the motion, motion B and I, right? So, what is the basic difference between these two? The formula here was the formula here was 
FBI. Just by heart this. The formula here was FBI. Here the formula is MB MBI. The formula here was FBI. F B I. I am repeating again and again by heart this part. The formula here is F B I and the formula here is M B I. What is M stands for? What does N M stands for? M stands for motion motion what does b stands for same magnetic field what does i stand for i is induced current induced current induced current why because in this part in this part from current, it is current. So from current, I'm getting the magnetic field. But in this part, from magnetic field, I'm getting the current. Right? This is ulta. This is opposite. From here, in this part, in this section, I'm getting magnetic field from current. And in this section, I'm getting current from magnetic field. That is why it is known as induced current. All right? So it is MBI, it is FBI. Get the basic difference very clear right away. Right? All right, you're getting it. All right, so this is how you use it. This is your right hand. This is the motion. This is the magnetic field. This is the induced current. This is the induced current like this. All right. Chalo, let's see the applications. Just now we saw the basic formulation. Now, now let's see the basic uh, difference between them. The basic difference in this chapter given is this. Let's see the basic difference. What is the basic difference? Perfect. So this entire chapter is on the difference between these. So let's start. All right. So in this part, you see if I take a current carrying conductor, let's say this is the current going over here. So how do you do it? Take your right hand. Take your uh, right hand. This is your thumb. This is your finger, right? So take your right hand, A, go, D, char. So take your right hand, take your right hand like this, like this, right? And this thumb should be pointing in the direction of current. This thumb should be directing in the, uh, di this is known as uh, this curl rule, right hand thumb rule. This is known as right hand thumb rule. The Fleming's rule was different. This is known as right hand thumb rule, right hand right hand okay this is known as right hand thumb rule see this is a different rule right this is a different rule take your right hand you know hold the hold the current carrying conductor like this point let your fingers point in the direction of current and curl your fingers curl your fingers and once you curl your finger you will see that curling motion will give you the direction of magnetic field so this is the magnetic field. This is the magnetic field and you'll get in the direction in the circular direction, right? So this is the circular direction of the magnetic field. All right. Take care. Okay. So also, also, let's see one more thing. Also, let's see one more thing. Take care. Uh, exactly in this section, if this is the true reality, then you must be saying, sir, so in this part like if i have a this plane so if i get a conductor like this if i get a conductor like this and i run a current through it so what will happen like what will happen so let's say this current is running like this okay the current is running like this this is how the wire is being uh, here wire is here the current is running like this so how what will be the magnetic field exactly the same way 
like here the magnetic uh, current is in this direction so right hand thumb rule will like keep your finger there and rotate now curl your hand so this is the magnetic field ka direction so like this will be the magnetic field but in this direction what will happen it is downwards so you need to see you know this is the pen it is downwards and you need to keep your finger like this and then rotate so if you can see it is clockwise and initially it was initially it was anti clockwise so here it is anti clockwise anti clockwise here you will get it clockwise this is the magnetic field so this is here you will get clockwise so this is how you get it so basic experiments are given in your textbooks today we are just revising so we'll just revise the basic concept and we'll move on because this chapter is really very big and within an hour we can only revise the basic concepts and that is what i'm doing you right so that is the basic concept that is known as right hand thumb rule there are only three rules in this chapter the first rule is flemings ka there are two rules of flemings left hand and right hand and th th this is separate and we have one more rule which is known as right hand thumb rule that is to get the direction of magnetic field from a straight current carrying conductor that's it all right all right also before moving forward let me also differentiate between two um, uh, this uh, two uh, misconceptions students have let me get it clear what is the difference between uh, uh, electromagnet and a solenoid you know what is a solenoid what is a solenoid versus electro uh, magnet right so in electromagnet you take a, a metal rod you take a metal rod and you just wrap a wire around it you just wrap a wire around it and you get this wire connected like this so this is known as electromagnet and exactly what happens in solenoid you just take a wire and you curl it around you just curl it around you just curl it around there is no uh, metal rod in between there is no metal rod in between this is the only basic difference right do you get it this is the rod iron rod metal rod metal rod so this is the metal rod right and here there is no metal rod this is solenoid this is electromagnet that is the basic difference and nothing else all right okay let's move on okay so let's see what else can we do what else do we need to know about this chapter right so okay ठीक है सो ऑल्सो अगेन इन अ सर्कुलर रिंग इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अ सर्कुलर रिंग इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अ सर्कुलर रिंग लेट से दिस इज अ सर्कुलर रिंग इफ देर इज अ करेंट रनिंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन हाउ डू यू फिगर आउट द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड हाउ डू यू फिगर आउट द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लेट सी अगेन जस्ट कंसिडर दिस स्मॉल सेक्शन दिस स्मॉल सेक्शन just consider this small section right <clears throat> just consider this small section and what do you see it is again a straight line it is again a straight line if you just consider that small section very 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 small section you see it is a straight line and you can just keep your hand point the finger in the direction of the current and curl your finger what will you see you will see uh, this direction right so this will be a direction of magnetic field here okay. uh, over this point this is the direction of the current this is the direction of the current and mark k if you are rotating it you will see this is the direction of magnetic field in this direction what is the direction you will keep it downwards and the direction will be the magnetic field direction will be like this this will be the magnetic field direction right so everywhere it will be like this if this is the current if, if the current is over here okay keep it keep your fingers like this and your magnetic field direction will be keep it like this and it will be like this so magnetic field will be like this this is the current direction 
So if you have a circular ring, you can figure out the direction of magnetic field like this. All right. So this is the basic difference. All right. So let's uh, uh, move to the next part. Okay. So let's see. What else? What else do we study in this chapter? This is a very uh, interesting chapter. So we will see about it. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So, if you have any doubts regarding anything, to ask me in the comment box. Right. I'm writing it here. Doubts. D O U B T S. Doubts. Here, please. Here, please. Right. All right. So, do ask that. You can raise your hand. You guys came late. Let me again explain you this part. Where is it? Screen walkthrough. Can you see this red box over on your screen? Uh, this this raise hand section. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Right. So please raise your hand and ask the doubt. Please raise your hand and ask the doubt. All right. What else is there? Properties of magnetic field. Magnetic field lines due to current through a circular loop. We just saw that the strength of the magnetic field at the center of the loop here depends upon. Okay. What does that uh, mean? The radius of the coil. The strength of magnetic field is inversely proportional to the radius of the coil. Let's see this. Okay. We are again uh, going to this part only. If this is a circle here and this is the current, so this will be the magnetic field. This is the current, this will be the magnetic field. If this is the current, this will be the magnetic field. If this is the current, this will be the magnetic field. If this is the current, this will be the magnetic field. Do you see the magnetic field car direction is in? this direction this direction right it is in this direction so what it is saying the magnetic field at the center of the loop will be very less because as the distance increases the magnetic field gets reduced right or in short let me explain it to you in a better way let me explain it to you in a better way okay let me explain this to you in a better way like if this is the current right and if this is the magnetic field if this is the magnetic field this also will be the magnetic field this also will be the magnetic field the direction will be like this the direction will be like this the direction will be like this the direction right at every point you can calculate the magnetic field right if you want to figure out here just keep your hand over here and rotate if you want to figure out there again rotate rotate so if you go farther will you you see that the magnetic field at this point right the magnetic field at uh, this point at this at in this loop is strongest it is getting weak it is getting weak it is the weakest right this is one this is two this is three this is four the magnetic field in the four is the largest as compared to three as compared to two as compared to one right so as as you move away from the center or as you move away from the you know this uh, current carrying conductor or any circular loop exactly the same is happening as you move away it gets weakened and weakened and weakened right that is what it is trying to tell you next is solenoid i just told you what is solenoid okay right what is a bar magnet and what is an electromagnet right fleming's left hand rule electric motor principal we will come to electric motor right okay done so here it is Let's come to this point then. All right. <clears throat> okay. Right. So, what is uh, the, the question? Next part will be. The next part is, uh, yeah, electromagnetic induction. So now we are going to study about that. Uh, by now we saw the magnetic effect by electric current. Now we are going to see the opposite. Okay. Till now we see electric uh, magnetic effects of electric current, right? Right. Now we are going to see electromagnetic induction. So the chapter is basically divided into two parts. Now we come to the important part of this chapter. All right. So let's see. What is this? Electromagnetic induction means if you have a wire coiled like this, if you have a wire coiled like this, 
and you have a galvanometer you have a galvanometer over here and you have a magnet over here right if you move this magnet to and fro in this direction to and fro like you're moving the magnet from there to here you're just you're not rubbing on the wire you're not rubbing the magnet you're not rubbing you're not rubbing kiss nairo so moving the magnet like this is the coil let's assume this is the coil you're just moving the magnet like this away away from it it is, it is in right you're just uh, moving the magnet thoda at a distance you're moving you're not rubbing you're not doing that you are moving the magnet you are moving the magnet in front of the coil you are moving the magnet in front of the coil what happens you will see a current is generated in the coil due to magnetic field a current is being generated in the coil due to magnetic field a current is being generated in the initially what did we, what did we see due to electric current magnetic field was generated that was the first part of the book but now we are learning this acha <coughs> this is a magnet so this will be a north pole and this will be a south pole therefore it will have a magnetic field down coming out of it and it will have a man <coughs> uh, you will see <coughs> you will see that uh, there is a magnetic field lines over here magnetic field lines over here so when it it gets rubbed so these magnetic fields line okay let me take a different color so these magnetic field lines will start to penetrate into this uh, sorry again they do not intersect right they will start penetrating right they will start penetrating into these this coil into this coil therefore a current will be induced a current will be induced right the current will be induced due to the magnetic field right so the current uh, induced in this coil will be known as induced current right and uh, can you uh, do you did, did you did you mind any anyone did you uh, 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 thought about it we are using a galvanometer here i'm not using an ammeter what is the difference between ammeter and a galvanometer what is the difference between ammeter and a galvanometer and a voltmeter kya difference hai these two are same it measures big currents big value of currents like 1 ampere 2 ampere and greater this measures very low value like 0.001 ampere and like that so galvanometer is used to measure small currents ammeter is used to measure big currents and voltmeter is used to measure voltage or potential difference so this is the reason i am using a galvanometer over in this uh, setup because the current induced will be very small current very small current did you get the difference it is very important right okay this uh, this was a question in your boards uh, what is the difference between ammeter and a, a galvanometer right so this is the basic difference ammeter is used to measure larger currents and galvanometer is used to measure smaller currents right ammeter will not detect a small current right and galvanometer will be uh, get fused if you pass a larger current through it so it, it is only designed to uh, take smaller currents only all right so this is the इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन का कंसेप्ट कंसेप्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन लेट्स मूव ऑन ठीक है इट इज दैट सिंपल इट इज इट इज इट इज दैट सिंपल ओके ऑलराइट सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑलराइट एंड अगेन अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू दिस कीप अप विद मी कीप अप विद मी दिस चैप्टर इज रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट i'm again telling you <coughs> electric sorry magnetic effects of electric current versus electromagnetic induction these are the only two topics you will study in this chapter and in this chapter what we see the difference between these two uh, is been shown by this is been shown by this in electromagnetic like here what we are doing we are generating magnetic field with help of current 
and here what we are doing we are generating a current with help of a magnetic field this is the basic difference between electric motor electric motor and electric generator electric generator so electric generator basically are of two types generator are of two types ac generator and a dc generator right so they are of two types ac generator and dc generator and motor is only of one type so what is a motor basically a motor in your fan which you use that is a motor what does it do it converts current or electrical energy to mechanical energy to mechanical energy a uh, electric energy electrical energy electrical energy to mechanical energy what it does it converts electrical energy to uh, mechanical energy right obviously it is doing that what is a motor it converts ha huh? l electrical energy to mechanical energy and what is a generator both of these generators both of the generator they convert mechanical energy to electrical energy for example uh, in your home fan is the example fan is the example right you switch on and the fan starts moving current to motion and this is the generator which when uh, in your building the light goes off to start the lift we need to switch on the um, generator so it uses the electrical energy it is converts into motion it converts into motion right sorry it uses the mechanical energy you need to move the generator right uh, in your uh, like in villages in weddings it is used the generator which you use the diesel and you put into it and you you know need to rotate the machine right it you need to give the motion to the machine and then it gives the light to the your house so you convert mechanical energy into electrical energy that is the basic difference and uh, in electric motor right if you want to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy you need to use left hand fleming's left hand rule fbi right fbi fbi and when you need to convert mechanical to electrical that is in generator you need to use mbi mbi right so this is the basic difference so here you are using fbi right this is the trick and here you use the mbi that is the trick over here all right so fbi and mbi are being used in these two concepts right so let's go uh, and uh, very uh, quickly let's uh, see what is difference between a generator and the uh, this <coughs> uh, the uh, motor very quickly let's see this right uh here we have magnets here we have magnets this is a magnet it is a north pole it is a south pole and in between that we have this a coil a coil which is attached to this which is attached to a split rings and which is attached to brushes right which is attached and these brushes are attached to a current carrying this thing and this i name as a b c and d right do you see this is the higher potential this is the lower potential therefore current is going in this direction the current is going in this direction the current is going in this direction the current is going in this direction it is coming down to this direction this is the direction of current can you see that yes you can see that and since we are studying about the motor so motor is on the left side like theek hai what is motor this motor exactly is the motor which is used in your fan matlab electrical energy to mechanical energy matlab i am supplying the current and i'll get the magnetic field effect all right so you see magnetic field over here so let's uh, say magnetic field is like this the direction of the outside is the magnetic field direction from north to south this is the direction of magnetic field right this is the direction of magnetic field so use your left hand 
I am uh, using the formula. Which which what formula did do I use? Fleming's left hand uh, rule. Remember? So ye aisa, ye aisa, or ye aisa. F B I. Use your left hand and see where is the magnetic field. Magnetic field is in this direction. This finger represents magnetic field. This represents the force in which it is it will be applied right and the third finger the middle finger represents the current the current is in the upward direction is in the upward direction and the magnetic field is in uh, this direction so what will be the direction of force it will be the inside the plane it will be inside the plane do you see that inside i represent inside as like this i will represent inside as i and i will represent outside as o Okay, it is inside the plane. So the force acting over here is inside. The force acting over is inside. Therefore, this will move inside. This will move inside. It will go inside. Therefore, the rotation will be anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Kiska rotate? Who, whose rotation? The rotation of the coil. The rotation of the coil. The rotation of the coil will be this. So the rotation of the coil will be like that. So after some time, what will happen? What will happen? This is the magnetic field. This is the magnetic field. And okay. See what is going to happen after some time. It will rotate. It will rotate and it will come like this. It will come like this. Take care. So here will be D, here will be C, here will be A, here will be B. It has rotated in the anti-clockwise. The AB length has gone down and rotated and come to the right side. Right? Do you see still the still this current is connected to this? Therefore, the current is still in this direction. The current is still in this direction. Therefore, again, from D to C, the current will still move in which direction? The current will still be moving in this direction. Therefore, again, it is going to be in inside direction, right? The force is going to be inside direction. Why? Because magnetic field is still in this direction. The magnetic field is this direction. The current is in this direction. The force is use your left hand. This is the magnetic field. This is the current. This is the force is going to be in downward direction. Try it, try it, try it. Imagine it to be on your floor. And see, magnetic field is this direction, current is in this direction, the force has to be in downward direction, right? So it will go again inside. So it will continuously moving in anti-clockwise direction. That is the motor using left hand, Fleming's left hand rule, right? Okay, so let's come back to generator. What is generator? Here we use split rings. Also remember this, we have, we have used split rings. It is splitted, right? It is split, split. Therefore, it is known as split rings and these are known as brushes. These are known as brushes, which is made up of carbon, right? Brush over there, which is made up of carbon, right? So that to reduce the friction. So let's very at very speed, let's see the uh, generator, generator, right? So we are going to see generator now. This is what I'm drawing is a DC generator, right? DC generator. So here I will have a galvanometer which will notice if the current is being flowing or not, right? So this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. So here again, I'll have this same format, right? So here it will be brushes, here it will be uh, brushes and here I will have a galvanometer right so in this part <coughs> excuse me 
so in this part we will see this is x and this is y direction and this is x and this is y direction right and this is the uh, galvanometer so just imagine in this part right it is again north pole south pole the magnetic induction is in this uh, right in this direction and here we will have a support which i will rotate in this direction in anti clockwise direction so i'll use my fleming's right hand rule so if i rotate in the anti so ab ab is going inside do you see ab is going inside ab will be going in because i'm rotating now i'm talking about generator the generator is the mechanical energy to electrical so i have to figure out if i give this motion to this uh, coil will there be a generation of electricity this is what i'm taking out so i gave a motion in the anti clockwise direction so ab is going down now use your right hand right hand m b i m b i m motion motion is in which direction motion is in downward direction magnetic field is in this direction so current will be in which direction current will be from b to a so current will be induced from b to a did you see ana motion motion is in downward direction magnetic field is in this direction so current has to be in downward direction right it is coming down so the motion will be so current will be from from this direction in short current will be from x to y did you get it from a to it will come x then current will be from x to y right this is what we figured out the current is in direction from x to y right let's see after one rotation after one rotation what happened after one rotation uh, d came to this point c came to this point a came to this point d came to this point i am still rotating and this is the north pole this is the south pole and still the magnetic field is in this direction now what happens now what happens i'm still rotating did you see also observe this <coughs> this d this uh, d was connected to this s2 this s2 this is s2 and this is s1 this is s1 right did you see s2 and s1 so therefore when current came from ad it came from s2 to x it went from s1 to x again it is still s1 it is still s1 it is still s2 now what is going to happen let's see now what happens now again the motion again now cd is going inside now cd is going inside cd is moving inside right so cd is moving inside so fleming's right hand rule motion magnetic field current so motion is downward magnetic field is like this so current will be from c to d therefore the current will be from c to d c to d hence that proves that again the current has come from x to y from x to y so a source is not changing the direction of the current what kind of source will it be it will be a it will be a direct current source dc source so this is a dc source this is a dc generator right what have what did we see in dc generator that the split rings that split rings here c c c c this is the split ring split rings right initially a was attached to s1 and then after later was it was attached to s2 it was attached to s2 later words right initially d was attached to s2 but afterwards it got attached to s1 but now we are going to see an ac generator this is the same diagram i'm just going to copy it i'm just going to rub this diagram right i'm just going to rub a little bit right i'll, I'll rub a little bit of the section yahan pe i'm going to just change a little thing right a, a very little change i'm going to a small change i'm going to make for a ac alternating current what i'm going to change what i'm going to make a difference is this this is the difference i'm going to make <clears throat> that this a will always be attached to this ring and this will always be attached to this ring this is the ring so this is coming okay right so 
a is attached to this part and this is attached to this ring these two are rings known as slit rings known as slit rings slit rings sorry uh, slip rings slip ring i'm so sorry uh, not slit uh, slip rings slip rings okay so it will come to this part and here we will have a galvanometer and it will come and go to this part so here it will be x and here it will be y so initially a is attached to s1 and d is attached to s2 right can you see that okay so right So once what exactly is going to happen the same thing is going to happen right there is again i'm going to give the motion to them i'm going to give the motion the current is going to be generated from b to a the, here, current aya. now current will go from x to y again and now everything is same right so current has been gone from x to y everything same like the previous one so the current has been flown from x to y let's see again let's see again what happened what happened right f mbi right hand thumb rule <laughs> motion is downward direction motion in downward direction current here uh, sorry magnetic field here so current will be in downward direction so from b to a therefore again x to y again x to y but there is going to be a slight change in this di in this same concept what is the change now the a which was attached to this ring has come back to the same ring and this which was attached to the nichola ring it has come back to the same position so it is still x and it is still y it is still x and it is still this is still x and this is still y <coughs> uh, c here a here A is attached to S1. Here still A is attached to S1. Here still A is attached to S1 only. S1. Here it was S1. Here also it is S1. It has just moved from here to here. Like assume this as a bangle. Bangle. Right. I have kept a bangle over here. And it is only moving from moving inside a bangle like this. So it has moved from this point of S1 this point of s1 to this point of s1 only so it is still attached to s1 it is still attached to s1 now d is attached to s2 s2 right now d is attached to s2 and it is still attached to s2 only here can you see that now if you see in this section mbi mbi motion magnetic field current so current will be from c to d now the current which is passing from D will pass to Y, Y to S2 and from S2 to Y. So in this part, in this part, the motion of the current is going to be from <coughs> Y to X. Y to X. Y to X. Right? And here it was X to Y, here it is X, Y to X. So just, so just, so just, just by changing the slit ring to a slip ring i can actually make a dc into ac that is the only difference changing from a, a slit split yeah what am i saying <clears throat> so from a split ring split ring to a slip ring i can actually make what is split ring that means uh, it is two different rings which is separated right and what is sl uh, slip ring that one node will be connected to this one node will be connected to this but in slip rings right this node which is connected to this part and this node which is connected to this part even after rotation so if this was a and this was d it was s1 and it was s2 after rotation what happens in split ring after rotation what happens after rotation s1 is attached to d and s2 
will be attached to a this is what happens in a slit ring but what happens in a slip ring it slips in the same direction it slips with the same ring it slips with the same ring it slips with the same ring what happens after a rotation after a rotation right this is a this is d which is attached to this point right so a will a will be attached to this only and d will be attached to this part so initially also a was attached to s1 now also a is attached to s1 initially d was attached to s2 now also d is attached to s2 therefore current fluctuates from x to y then from y to x like this therefore it becomes an alternating current and that is known as ac current <clears throat> this is known as alternating current and hence it is and here it does not fluctuate here it does not fluctuate and hence here it is a direct current it is from x to y and again after rotation it remains to x to y therefore it is a current which is very direct Lee, uh, coming to our house which is known as direct current direct current is it does not change its direction right alternating current is it changes the direction right they have their separate advantages uh, in the chemical processes when we use electrolysis like we have an anode and we have a cathode we need a current which do not changes their polarity or they do not go from x to y or y to x so there we use only direct current so in any chemical processes we use direct current right but in any other processes we use alternating current where we need like the current which is coming from uh, powerhouse to our uh, homes 